。喂喂，我唔系嗌你啊，爸，靓仔啊，靓仔，我忍你好耐噶啦，出嚟啊！啊，得啦，得啦，得啦，叻啦，叻啦。Hey and welcome to Wild Sea. Oh my goodness! In some grimy corner of a police station in Shanghai, we have a local mafia boss throwing punches left and right at the officers for daring to arrest his sweetheart of a wife. Not a soul dares to lift a finger. After unleashing his fury, the bully retreats, hurling threats in every direction. But oh, surprise! All his cars have packed their bags. But wait, there's more. A pack of rival gangsters, the Axe Gang, appear out of nowhere, cornering the boss's thugs, leaving them with no way out. The gangsters start shooting at their rivals while the mafia boss makes a run for it. But one of the generals, faster than lightning, hurls an axe at the fleeing little man and cuts off one of his legs, leaving him biting the dust. The leader of the Axe Gang, Brother Sum, grabs a weapon and, with a spine-chilling dance, heads towards the mafia boss, who begs for mercy at the top of his lungs. But no, he gives him a thorough beating that leaves him seeing stars. Turns out the hooligans bribe the cops to turn a blind eye, and they continue to wreak havoc in the city with their spine-chilling dances, wreaking havoc wherever they go. On the outskirts of town, two mysterious individuals scout the people and hatch their evil plans. They sneak into the village and start intimidating the tough guy, demanding money and claiming to be from the Axe Gang. But their threats fall on deaf ears as the villagers begin to surround them with unfriendly faces. Skinny Singh realizes he's picked the wrong village to strike fear in, and tries to make a run for it. But the landlady catches him in the act. The landlady, more like a raging fury, proceeds to give him a thorough beating with a slipper, causing poor Singh to flee in fear. But wait. Before he goes, he threatens to bring reinforcements and throws a firecracker over the walls, landing on someone's head. To his surprise, he has alerted the general of the Axe Gang by knocking off his hat. Without a doubt, the hooligans storm into the village like raging bulls, demanding to know who has been playing with fireworks. Without hesitation, Singh points the finger at the village landlady, and the general goes after her like a possessed man. Sensing danger, the woman flees at the speed of light, leaving her tenants to their fate. Things take a turn for the worse when the tough guy tells the gang leader that his threats mean nothing, prompting the general to go after him with the intention of giving him a beating with his axe. But suddenly, the man is struck by a mysterious force and ends up inside a barrel, breaking his back and forcing the hooligans to call for reinforcements. Quickly, an army of hooligans arrives in Pigsty Valley and begins to sow chaos, messing with everyone who crosses their path. They kidnap a child and drench her in gasoline, demanding to know who sent the captain packing. With no response, the gang leader prepares to ignite a lighter near the girl, but a young man rushes to the rescue, claiming that he's the guilty one. The hooligans pounce on him like hyenas, but the boy stands his ground with a flurry of kicks. Sending the crooks to the ground. Suddenly, several men are launched into the air by a powerful punch, while the tailor joins the brawl, fighting against the thugs to help the boy. The hooligans attempt to react by grabbing their weapons, but before they can pull the trigger, their weapons are shattered and they themselves are hurled against the walls. At that moment, the owner of a restaurant named Donut appears and starts dishing out punishment to the hooligans with a stick. Smashing their weapons and sending them flying backward, the man's furious attack raises a cloud of dust, in which only the screams of the thugs can be heard. When the dust settles, the hooligans are lying on the ground, desperately trying to escape from the village. The gang leader is furious about what happened and blames Sin and his brother for making them look ridiculous, even though the two of them aren't even part of his gang. Sum, that Machiavellian mobster. Orders his henchmen to eliminate our protagonist, but bam, the guy is quicker than an eel and dodges the sharp axe thrown by the crime boss. Some dumbfounded comes up with a crazy idea. He tells the guy, "Kill one of those peaches from Pigsty Valley, and then we can talk about your admission to the Axe Gang." After leaving the Wolf's Den, Singh Bone's brother gives him a preacher-like lecture about ambition. He promises them the moon and the stars if they manage to join the gang. Bone scratches his head, doubtful of how they could defeat one of those tough guys from Pigsty Valley. Singh smiles and reveals that he's also a kung fu master, 
learned from a book given to him by a beggar to whom he gave his savings. Singh didn't care about being a doctor, he wanted to be the protector of the world, using his kung fu skills. One day, he sees a mute girl being harassed by a gang of hooligans. He orders them to stop, but ends up beaten and sprawled on the ground. The boys laugh at him, leaving him lying there like a sack of potatoes. Since that day, Singh decides that being good is not worth it in this world and vows to become a formidable villain. He spots an ice cream cart and pounces on it like a master thief, grabbing cones and running off, laughing at the girl's foolish expression. Meanwhile, the sinister brother Sum hires two professional assassins to teach the Pigsty Valley folks a lesson. These guys may appear blind, but in the underworld they are known for their ability to kill with music. When the advisor labels them as the strongest assassins, they respond with modesty, claiming that there's a guy named The Beast who is even more lethal, though he's locked up in a mental institution. At night, one of the fighters from the town decides to bail out to avoid trouble, but he comes across one of the musicians playing his instrument. The man moves away from the music as objects around him are sliced into pieces by the sound waves. What a mess he's gotten himself into. The guy senses that something fishy is going on but reacts too late, and the merciless killer tears off his head. Meanwhile, the tailor finds himself trapped in an ambush by another musician who forces him into a fight to the death. The battle is fierce, like two rabid dogs fighting over a bone, and they end up bursting out of the buildings where the first musician is waiting for them, calm as ever. The blind man enters the scene and, with his deadly sound waves, sends the tailor flying through the air. Just when it seems like the man is about to bite the dust, the restaurant owner appears, running to the tailor's aid. With his spear in hand, he defends himself more effectively against the attacks, hurling anything he can find at the assassins. Donut bravely jumps into the fray, fending off the attacks and getting closer to the wrongdoers, to the rhythm of the music. He manages to reach them with the last weapon, but encounters a force shield that stops him in his tracks and is thrown back by the counterattack. The musicians resume their brutal assault as the tailor moves Donut away from danger, sustaining serious injuries in the process. Before they can be finished off, the landlady disperses the sound waves with her powerful scream. The assassins notice the presence of another fighter and try to go after him, but they are abruptly stopped by the landowner descending from the sky. They attempt to strike the man, but their attacks bounce off his body, causing them to hit each other. The landowner grabs the two men and shakes them like ragdolls before throwing them far away. The assassins recover and try to unleash their most powerful attack, transforming the sound waves into warrior skeletons that launch themselves against the man. The landlady intervenes with her screaming technique, getting rid of the demons and sending the musicians flying. When the fight ends, the townspeople try to save the heroes, but two of them have already bitten the dust, and Donut succumbs to his wounds as well. The next day, Singh tries to scare a passenger on the train, but ends up being beaten relentlessly and thrown off the train like a common beggar. He blames his brother for not being bad enough and laments that they haven't killed anyone after all this time wondering how they can join the gangsters that way. Once again, he encounters the ice cream girl and pounces on her, demanding all her money and knocking her to the ground. Singh grabs the girl again, threatening her with a knife, but all he sees are tears streaming down her cheeks. Bone manages to find the cash in the cart, and both of them get their hands on the coins ready to make their escape. However, Singh notices that the girl is signaling something and understands who she truly is. The girl shows Singh a candy from years ago and reveals that she was, in fact, the mute girl he tried to save when they were kids. Realizing the truth, he feels terrible and throws the candy to the ground before making his getaway. Before Singh can dwell on his mistakes, the gangsters catch him and bring him before Brother Sum. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button. It only takes a second and helps me out a ton. Sum tells him that he is now part of the gang and assigns him a new job. The guy is taken to a psychiatric hospital and is sent to free a murderer who is locked up in the depths of the building. Singh storms into the hospital and manages to get inside, eventually reaching an underground corridor filled with frogs. He forces the lock and opens the iron door only to find an old man sitting on the toilet. They take the individual and the gangsters have a hard time believing that this is the legendary killer. 
known as the Beast. The advisor explains that their boss wants the guy to kill two people and is willing to pay whatever it takes, but he's not sure if the old man is really the one they're looking for. The gangster pulls out a gun and points it at the man, but he quickly grabs it and points it at his own head. The guy pulls the trigger and fires, but surprisingly, he catches the bullet with just two fingers, leaving everyone in shock. The beast turns towards the walls and pounds the floor with brutal force, creating a huge hole in the room as everyone in the casino scrambles to get away. The killer lunges forward and sees the opponents waiting for him by the table. They turn out to be the landowners who have come to wipe out the Axe Gang once and for all. The couple shows the gangsters the funeral bell they have brought as a gift, which makes Brother Sum shout at them in rage. Imagine this. The lady of the house, braver than a bull in its last rodeo, delivers a kick to the thug's belly. Bam! She even breaks the table with a single blow. Meanwhile, the husband, no less, goes straight for the face. But hey, it seems like the tough guy isn't phased at all. No big deal, they tell themselves, and they charge at the thug like professional wrestlers, together, hoping that... But no, the guy sends them flying like popcorn in a microwave. You can see the guy beating up the husband at a speed even Usain Bolt couldn't reach, while the poor man tries to dodge the blows like playing Don't Touch Me. But of course, he falls and ends up stuck to the wall like a poorly pasted poster. Then the lady takes on the role of an opera diva and lets out a scream that could shatter eardrums, but it only slightly pushes the guy. And he laughs, what a nerve, and he goes after the lady as if she were a boxing gym. At this point, our couple realizes that the guy is made of iron or something, so the lady goes for the huge bell they have lying around and smashes it to pieces. With the bell shattered, the lady lets out a scream, straight out of a horror movie, and everything around her crumbles like it's made of clay. And guess what? That actually moves him. He gets sent flying like a capeless superhero, creating a vortex of total chaos. But this guy, tough as a rock, not only survives, but crawls on the ground like a wounded cat. The couple prepares to deliver the final blow, but the thug starts crying like a distraught child, begging them not to kill him. The couple relaxes, mistake number one in the survival manual and the thug pulls out daggers shaped like flowers from who knows where and stabs them in the abdomen, resulting in a technical draw. The leader of the bad guy sees all this and shouts at Singh, the new guy, to hit them on the head with a wooden bat. Singh, who is a good-hearted person and doesn't know what he's doing, hesitates but ultimately decides to strike the thug on the head. The guy goes berserk, throws the couple into the air, and plants the husband's face into the ground. But when he looks around, Surprise! The couple and Sing have vanished, and all of this happened in less time than a rooster crows. Imagine the scene, after all the chaos, the couple takes the battered Sing back to the ranch they call Pigsty Valley. There, amidst herbs and bandages, they try to patch him up. And oh, surprise, the guy is still breathing with wounds that look like the work of Freddy Krueger. That's when they realize that perhaps the man has something special, some hidden power or something like that. Meanwhile, the gangsters arrive at Pigsty Valley, which now looks like a war zone, devoid of any living soul. And there he is, a giant cocoon of bandages as if taken from an alien movie. But the surprise doesn't end there. None other than Singh emerges from the ruins, as if he had been pulled out of the washing machine but alive. The thugs, who think they're tough, pounce on him with all they've got but Singh sends them flying like a circus magician. The criminals, who don't understand the meaning of surrender, try to trap Singh. But with his newfound Superman-like strength, he dispatches them like flies. Only Singh and the killer remain. The others are already seeing stars. Singh goes all out against the killer, a punch to the face and a kick to the stomach. Bam! The guy falls to the ground. But it turns out the killer is made of steel because... Despite the beating, he's nearly unscathed. Singh tries to land punches on him, but the killer is quicker, effortlessly blocking each strike. Continuing his flurry of blows, Singh steps on the guy's feet in a wild dance, and the man screams in pain. Another kick sends him crashing to the floor. But this killer is like a snake. He writhes and starts moving like a frog. Yes, a frog. Just imagine the scene. 
and suddenly he leaps towards Singh with the speed of lightning, ramming him through the building, crashing against walls as if they were playing pinball. In a desperate attempt, Singh jumps to higher floors, but the beast anticipates his moves and with a blow sends him soaring into the sky. And there goes Singh, disappearing into the atmosphere as if it were a SpaceX launch. The situation was so intense that Singh, still soaring through the air like a crazy roller coaster, manages to regain control and looks up to the sky. And amidst the clouds, like a divine apparition, he sees a Buddha. With his hands clasped in prayer, our hero begins to plummet directly towards the beast. And there, in mid-flight, Singh ignites himself like a matchstick, engulfed in a ball of fire in the sky. The beast, down below, starts to realize that things are getting ugly. He sees a meteorite falling from the sky, heading straight towards him. Singh performs the Buddha palm technique, a cosmic strike that creates a massive crater beneath the beast, like a black hole. Terrified, the beast begs for mercy, and Singh halts his attack, hovering in the sky like a Buddha-powered Superman. Of course, the deceitful beast tries to attack Singh with his usual dagger, but Singh, quick as lightning, strikes behind the man and obliterates the building in an instant. Witnessing the stark difference in power, the killer surrenders and kneels before Singh, admitting defeat. Sometime later, the girl from the ice cream cart is strolling down the street and notices a new candy store. As she approaches, she discovers that Bone now works there as an assistant. Singh senses her presence and rushes towards her smiling like a child with a new toy. The girl returns the smile and realizes that Singh has finally revealed his true self. They begin to reminisce about the old times and Singh welcomes her into the store with contagious joy. But the adventure doesn't end here. I'll see you in the next one. Let's go.